Good afternoon. I'd like to call the <laughs> August 21st, 2019 meeting of the Royal Oak Downtown Development Authority to order. Uh, at this point, I'd like to open public comment. There's public, but no comment. Okay. Okay. Oh, we're, we were waiting for yours, actually, but okay. Yet another meeting. Okay, with that, I'll close public comment, and I'll ask everyone to, uh, if they've looked at the meeting, meeting, uh, the meeting minutes from the 17th of July and the 31st of July, and I think uh, we could take a single resolution for both sets of minutes. I move the minutes. Moved by Director Krieger. I'll second. Second by Director Safai. Any discussion? Nope. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, let's just do uh, these expense items real quick. Um, get these out of the way. If there's any questions here, now's the time to bring them forward. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, I'm going to make a few changes here in the uh, order of the agenda. Uh, Sean needs to leave early, so I thought we'd move up. The first thing we're going to move up is uh, in front of you is a sponsorship agreement. For the holiday glow. Where's that? And I'm going to let Sean, where did he go? Oh, there he is. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This one. Yep. We're going to have you do both. All right. Uh, so it's for holiday glow. Uh, Before the board is uh, sponsorship uh, agreement. Uh, for $70,000 for the annual Holiday Glow event. Um, this will be paid to uh, 360 Event Productions, who the DDA had selected to manage Holiday Glow, uh, including last year as well as this year. Um, also before you is, is that a draft agreement that's been signed by the uh, representative from 360 Event Productions. Um, I don't believe she's in the audience to answer any questions, but... Uh, very similar to last year. Uh, the budget amount for the sponsorship is the same, $70,000. Um, this year, uh, the committee is recommending that the event take place on Saturday, December 14th, uh, from noon to 10 p.m., and then again on Sunday, December 15th, from, I believe, noon to 5 p.m. Be slightly different than last year. Uh, there won't be the repeat of the balloons that we had on, on Washington. Uh, there's actually uh, the committee's working with the event organizer to organize a parade that will be downtown, but unlike previous year's parades, it will, uh, it will actually be at night, so it'll be a glow parade. So all of the floats will glow, marching bands will light up and glow, and everything else. So she is uh, our event manager is working with the parade company to to secure those floats, I believe there are five total. A couple of questions. Um, so um, just I'm assuming since originally we were going to have this the, the week before and uh, we had talked with the Restaurant Association, they were going to have their Santa crawl this week. Do we know for a fact that they've been, been, been good to us and have moved their event? I've, uh, I've received some confirmation. Uh, I believe it was Monday evening that uh, actually one of the DDA board members had talked to the, uh, the organizers of that, and that event, the pub crawl, had, has been re uh, moved to a week before that, which is the weekend of the 7th. Okay. Well, that's, that's kind and generous on their part. Tony, thanks for getting involved there. Next question. Um, we're going to need uh, to do some patching on the um, kiosks. Um, is it something as simple? We go to uh, Rocket and get a, uh, a sticker, maybe, um, and, and put it. In, in other words, the kiosks have the event as being the weekend, the week before. 
Uh, I and that's, that's all one hard I, sheet of what's going on in the six months. So we don't want to change that out, but we want to just... So I've talked to Johnson Sign Company about how we make changes later on in the year to those signs. Uh, we have two options, essentially. They can take the, all those signs down, take all the lettering off of them, reprint new signs, um, and put them back up. That's about 2500 bucks. Um, or you can get... They can print a vinyl sticker yeah. with a correction on it that we can put on there. Um, for, for what, 50 bucks? Yeah, and they can match the coloring. It, it's still evident that it's a sticker if you look hard enough. Um, option two. Option so two. That's option two, which is significantly cheaper and less labor intensive. Yeah, in fact, in fact, um, let's not have to vote on that. If, if, you, if, you, if you want to do something cute, I don't, I don't you know, I, 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 it's not my call, but I don't know that those things have to stay uniform. Maybe, you know, since it is the holiday goal, you print it in maybe even a brighter color to draw attention to it and, and, and give some more promotion to the event on the street. I mean, I mean does anyone have a problem with that? That if take, you're taking those signs and they're not looking as, as austere as they might be, but this is something I think that, you know, if we can get this done in the next couple of weeks, you've got th three months basically where you're promoting the event for free. You know, at how many, what do we have, four, five, four kiosks? Thirteen. How many? Thirteen. Uh, did, you, did we add nine? <laughs> no, we were sleeping. I stayed within a couple blocks. <laughs> All right, so, uh, I mean, that might be an idea. Just yeah, I think, I think use your best discretion, and I think you know what it is. Yeah, I, I mean, if it jumps off the page, I don't think that's a problem. I will say that, yeah, I, I think it is necessary to change that. There are a lot of people who pay very close mm -hmm. attention to those. Um, I get messages it. all the time for clarification on things. So. All right. Okay, so any other questions regarding this event or anything anybody want to add from the committee? No. Regarding the event? Is there a resolution there? Are we still doing uh, the horse, the, the carriages and the um, cookie crawl and what does this event consist of? Yeah, so there's, there's also going to be horse and carriages. Um, there actually was a, a fear that if we did move the date of the event that those features might not be available, but they are... They are scheduled for, for the 14th and 15th, um, so that will be operating that weekend. Um, there will also be the cookie crawl that Saturday. Um, I believe the hours of that are 1 to 6. Okay. Um, Sean, could you ask uh, someone from 360 to, um, if they're available, to attend the next Consumer Marketing Committee meeting um, so the members can get an update? Because I know this is a fluid thing that's, rapidly changing about what we she can do and what she can do and, and everything else. So I just think it would, it would be great if we could get an update on it at the committee level. Certainly. Thank you. Sorry, Tony. The signature item this year is going to be the Holiday Glow Parade. Great idea, Director Baglio. Um, so she advised, uh, Julie advised us last time at the Consumer Marketing Committee meeting that the Detroit Parade Company that weekend has more availability, uh, more floats available, so she's pretty excited about the deal that she can make with them. It's going to, you know, anybody can be in the parade, but it has to be, they have to have some kind of glow aspect to their, to their float or to their whatever they're doing. Is it, would it be possible for the, and I don't, know if the DDA is even interested, but maybe putting out some kind of a, a number, a, an amount, 250 500 for like a, a prize for the best float for um, participants. You know, that would really incentivize, I think, people to put together a nice float, spend a little time, effort to be creative. Because like I said, the float's going to, the uh, parade's going to be the signature item. And I don't know, just for fun. Well, I, have a, I have a question. Who, 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 and how are we going to promote the availability to get in the parade? In other words, it, 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 is, is there going to be something put out saying, "Hey, this is the new parade, and here's a form you should fill out." I mean, if you want to get in it, if you've got a band, if you want to ride your bike, if you want to do whatever, how, how's that going to happen? Hmm? I think that's a Julie question. Julia, Julie is reaching out. Yeah, and they're sponsored. Wait, 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 wait. She's reaching out via... Calling them, calling high schools, calling the dance clubs. From from the past parade, she's taken that information. Who participated yeah, before? Good. The yeah. community and I'm organizations. I'm speaking from past practices. Um, sponsorship levels get you 
afloat or whatever. Okay, so so is but is there any and I'm not sure how one promotes this or how it's been done in the past, but you said it's pretty much open to anybody who wants to glow, for lack of a better term. So just reaching out to the former participants obviously isn't enough. I mean, if you really, if you're opening it up, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure how you do it, but. That's I mean, her job. We could ask Julie. Well, um, but, but I understand that. But, yeah. but, but, but so has she, you guys are the committee, has she told you how she's going to she's reach not. out? Um, I, I feel badly that she's not here to answer these questions. This, was this on the agenda? Didn't. Well, that's an excellent question, and, and that's definitely. And, a and the, the, only, the only thing that I would say is, you know, it's the old story. It's the end of August or whatever, I, the middle yeah, of August. Yeah. And we I, had, I, I'm, not, I'm not claiming to have the. I'm sure via social media and via all the, the different things that we have, mm -hmm. um, with maybe even with Mark's Lane, we get them involved. And promote it out because I think, I, first of all, I think it's a brilliant idea, and I think it's 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 um, a a fail-proof way to get people down there. I mean, if if if, if, if weather's good, you're going to have people there, but once you have them there, you got to put it on a show. And what we don't want, what what we don't want is is all of a sudden nobody got the word out, like like like. Uh, and I'm sorry, I'll bring it up, like vegans and vodka, where nobody knew about the darn thing, which, which, which wasn't a DDA thing, but we, somehow we need to get the word out and get, get, that, get, get you know, some, some cool stuff out there and get it populated. But, but what, I do, what I'd hate to hear is, man, I didn't even know we could get in that. Or I didn't, you know, I didn't know there was going to be a parade. Oh, right now, we're the only ones who know there's going to be a parade. No reason we shouldn't get the buzz going now. I agree. Well, if that's the case, then, yeah. and if you're interested in what... Uh, Director Yesbick put forward, then I suggest someone make a motion and we so well, Julie can have that. I'm talking about, we got two, we got a couple things to look at here, right? Because we got to make a motion. But we're contract. Yeah, yeah. We, need a, we need a motion to approve the agreement if, if it's satisfactory as well as authorizing me to sign it. And then if you want to authorize some additional funds for something else, I'd do that separate. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll move this. I'll move the uh, sponsorship agreement. A motion by Director Riley. Second. A second by Director Jason Krieger. Uh, any discussion? Seeing that we call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. And then, as far as far as that goes, I would. I'd probably. I might even take it one step further. I might go first, second, third. I mean, I think it's kind of cool. I, I love the idea of a competition. Um, whether it's a gift card, whether, whether you know, I'm not, I'm not sure what, what we can do within that, but I think it's a great idea. As long, I, I'm all for it, as long as it's in conjunction with a, a big promotion level and, and getting the word out, like, here's what we're doing. But, but is it for the floats? Is it for the participants? I mean, do, do, do you see what I'm saying? So let's, let's, let's table that. For, I think we still have time for one month, sure. and we'll have, we can address these excellent questions to Julie. And see how she's you know responds. Well, and, 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 we'll and what I would, what, what I would do is I would use the, the incentivization, if that's even a word. Um, I would use it to get as many participants as possible. So I wouldn't leave it with just floats. I'd leave it with floats, bands, I'd marching ba bands, bands. Or what, would just have have different levels, Bins. so so that you're encouraging everybody to get it. I, I mean, you, for for example, a marching band. I mean, a high school marching band or anything like that. Man, if they could get a five hundred five hundred dollars, does them a lot of good in a year. You know. Agreed. Yep. Cool. Okay, so we'll look at that aspect in September then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because Sean's got to leave, we're going to jump all the way down to 10A. Downtown manager report. I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, we do have a new business open, uh, Condado Tacos. It's open at uh, 310 South Main Street. That opened a couple weeks ago. Uh, so far proven to be very popular. Um, we have an expanding business. Broadway Salon has moved into 401 South Washington. They're currently executing their build-out um, into the space next door. Previously, they were at 405, so now they've taken the whole building. Um, coming soon, we also have City Ramen, uh, which should be open very shortly. I've been paying very close attention to them. They, they have an active social media page, too, that you can follow on Facebook, where they give you updates. Um, we also have Mathnasium that's undergoing its build-out uh, in the former 515 uh, space on South Washington. And then we have Proving Grounds Coffee that's also going through a build-out right now. Uh, they also have a facade grant application that's before the board this afternoon. 
Um, Mark Slane is also working on a press release for us. They just sent me a draft uh, before the board meeting this afternoon um, talking about all the opening and expanding businesses, and they also acknowledge a few businesses that are celebrating some anniversaries. Howard & Howard is uh, just recently celebrated its 150th. Alex Emilio Salon just celebrated its 18th. Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle, it's, they've been around for 40 years, although not all of it in downtown Royal Oak. Um, and then the First United Methodist Church will be celebrating a construction completion kind of grand, grand opening for all their new amenities they, ha they have inside their building, too. So um, <clears throat> just giving you an update on the pedicabs, uh, I've been talking to Josh Cooper from Scoop. He says everything is going fantastic. Uh, they're still very interested in uh, coming back next year. Uh, kicking off during uh, the Memorial Day weekend and going all the way through the summer through uh, the Labor Day weekend. Um, so we're going to get them involved on the ground floor uh, early next year. I believe uh, we were talking about maybe January or February to get them networking with businesses so that they could put together enough uh, of a revenue stream from ad sales that will carry them through the entire summer. So I think they'd be able to, to operate more strategically that way. Uh, this year, of course, it was the first year that we tried it. It proved popular, so we've just been continuing on a month-to-month -month basis, which I'm glad it's popular. Uh, it hasn't given the company a lot of time to mobilize a sales force in downtown. Uh, so next year, we're going to correct for that. Um, Live Music Thursdays is continuing. Uh, we're getting a lot of really good press. We now have an active social media page that's independent from the downtown, just so people can pay attention to just the live music that's happening in downtown. And uh, we have some downtown stakeholders and some business owners contributing to that page as well. We also have a section on our website. Um, as the board knows, Vegans and Vodka occurred the first weekend in August uh, in the alleyway behind Mr. B's. Um, I'll also say Mark's Lane has been very active helping me out, supporting me on social media, uh, helping me schedule a lot of posts. They put together an entire calendar for the remainder of the month. Um, they've done a few uh, press releases press releases. As I've mentioned, they've, they've done one celebrating uh, the anniversaries for the businesses. They're doing one on the uh, increased participation at the library with all of their events going on. Um, they helped me out with a, uh, a Live Music Thursdays uh, press release. And then um, they will also be helping me promote some, some additional news later this month uh, relating to my conference in South Bend that I attended earlier this week. Um, the Lieutenant Governor of Indiana was there. She gave the closing remarks for the uh, uh, the, I guess, closing reception there. And uh, she announced that the Great Lakes Downtowns Conference will be coming to downtown Royal Oak next year in September. So I think that's a fantastic opportunity for us, for us to get recognized in the Great Lakes region. We'll have DDAs, Main Streets, downtown managers, city officials coming from all over the Great Lakes to come to downtown Royal Oak, you know, to attend a lot of the sessions and events. So I think it's a fantastic PR opportunity to get you know our narrative out there as well. So I think that's definitely a win and, and a fantastic opportunity. Um, and then uh, I've been spending uh, a lot of my time also working on uh, some items for the uh, infrastructure committee, getting a lot of quotes, uh, and then kind of planning out where we can potentially put some bike racks. Uh, I just took uh, a couple design uh, proposals to the infrastructure committee their la at their last meeting, and so we narrowed it down to some things and got some good feedback. Um, so lastly, I'll just close my, my report with saying that the uh, chili cook-off that the DDA is sponsoring, that's also done by 360 Events, that's going to be taking place on October f uh, 4th and 5th. So that Where's that at? Yeah, where is that? Is that the print on that, I believe, is uh, 3rd Street was her oh, first right. choice. So she, I think she's just finalizing the footprint well, she had finalized four. footprints. The uh, special event permit had been approved. So, wasn't it Fourth Street? I think it takes Fourth Street and then part of Williams. So, okay. Fourth Street on uh, Fourth Street on the east side, east of Maine. No, right over here. You just he just said you said Third. Third, I think, was her. Oh no, you're right. It is Fourth Street. Third Street was her second option. Yeah, but she but was but Fourth Police Street. Police Department. Yeah, it's it's it'll be on Fourth Street. It's east of Maine, right? Yeah, I know. So yeah, our side here. Um, but one thing, real quick, Sean. Um, if, if you can, I think I think it's just it'd be it'd be worth our while. Um, I know we want to stay on top of the pedicab guys and make sure that, that things are going well with them. So if they're like reporting to coming to us back in January, but we got to set little tickers to make sure that that they're they're there in line. You know, if there's stuff that we need to do to help them. 
to get in terms of when I say help them, I mean get them advertisers. Absolutely. Because, yep. well, we don't, what we don't want to do is we don't want to get to like middle of May and they're like, guys, well, you know, but we didn't sell enough or we're halfway there. And, and all of a sudden, it's one of these like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I anticipate that my communication with them will be ongoing in the off season Good. to plan for that. Perfect. Perfect. And I just have one thing. Director that, Baglio. Um, Last Thursday, I walked around downtown, and I was pretty proud. Um, there were lines everywhere, lines to get into Fifth Avenue, lines to get into the Royal Oak Music Theater. My store was packed. The restaurants were, were all busy. Uh, the summer concert series was going full blast. All the pedicabs were full. It felt like Royal Oak. Of you know the, the Thursdays that we used to enjoy, um, so I think that a lot of the stuff that we're doing is is really working, um, and I'm going to talk bring some ideas to the consumer marketing committee to continue building on Thursdays through the fall and in the spring um, to to really keep that vibe going. It's it pretty cool. That, 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 that's a good point, and I think um, I think some of the the, the the parking scares have worn off, particularly now that it's gotten into full blown summer. And people are here and seeing that, that there's plenty of parking. Not to mention that 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 surrounding communities are dealing with their own parking ruses, so to speak. So I think yeah, I think I think all the efforts that we're doing are paying off. Anything else for uh, Sean? Okay. Thank you, Sean. Uh, okay. I might as well do the facade grid too, because okay. he'll do the. Okay, okay yeah, that's a, a number eight. We're going to jump all over the place here, the facade grant, because Sean, you seem to know the most about this. Yeah. Yeah, um, So earlier this month, GDA received a facade grant, a facade improvement grant application from uh, the owners of Proving Grounds Coffee. They're located at uh, 417 South Washington. Um, they're currently doing their build out. Uh, what they're specifically asking for is fi to be reimbursed for 50% of their facade improvement costs, which comes to a total of $3,700. Uh, the vast majority of that $3,700 is reimbursement for a wall sign that they're putting up in front of the building. Uh, I should note that in that application, uh, they have their prior version, which you, you see is, is edited. You see initially there is two signs on that building. And what they submitted to me was one where they crossed out that top sign because you're not allowed to have two signs on your building for your business. So, um, so I did take the, uh, the application down to the building department just to get a preliminary, some preliminary feedback to see if it's you know, within the confines of the, uh, of the sign ordinance. And I was told that it, it, it does conform. Uh, so it's, it's likely that that will be unaltered and that they won't have to come back with a, with a changed design of that sign. But what they have in front of there is the, uh, is the sign that they're going to put up and they're going to put a coat of paint on the building as well. Oh, nice. And then they're adding those windows. Yeah. Is there, um, I, mean, I mean, typically this goes through committee, um, and, and I'm assuming that this is happening because there's an there's a expediency issue. With the timing issue. Yeah, they're right? hoping to to get open as soon as possible. Sorry. And what I don't want to do is I don't want I don't want to open up Pandora's box or some right. presents. I mean, normally we go through the committee, but under this and it, it came to the committee, but it came kind of okay. late, last minute okay. type okay. thing. So we really didn't have much. Uh, we requested some more information, and that's when Sean went and collected the information and got it out to everybody. Okay. And that's the time frame in between our last meeting and, and this <coughs> meeting. So this is this is more detailed than what you saw in your committee yeah. meeting. Correct. I, well, I, I'm assuming I'm assu get, I try to get it before the, the the committee and then the DDA to get some kind of approval before they start work. This okay. is usually my goal. And, and does the committee does the, I'm assuming the committee supports this? Yeah. From what I've seen, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. This falls okay. in line with other things that we've supported in the past. Okay. Oh, that's clever. So, okay. <coughs> So, Dr. Krieger. Well, to get things going, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the resolution. I'm assuming it's a resolution to yes, there is a resolution. pay for uh, half of the build out. The reason why is because the, the signage that they're proposing, uh, it's uh, actual pin mounted, wall mounted sign. It's not a backlit box, so I think it's tasteful. 
It's uh, lit by uh, gooseneck lights from right. what I saw. So I think that's tasteful as well. It falls within some of the recommendations within the uh, ordinance. And uh, I think it'll look, it's an improvement. So I'm, I'm in support of it. Motion. I second. I second by Director Bagley. Mr. Fine. Uh, just to be clear, um, this the way we handle these is is a reimbursement correct, correct. type of situation. So, whatever <clears throat> the paperwork comes in to Mr. Twain is what what will get paid out, and that'll come back to us. And they inspect it. Correct. So, what we're seeing will be built, or they will not get. Built. Exactly. We're not just correct. cutting a check here. Right. They have to show okay. us three things primarily: receipts. Yep. Uh, they have to show us that all their permits are finalized re yep. in relation to the work. Then they have to show us a picture that shows that it conforms with the design that they submitted. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any, stuff. Any other questions? Oh. I think it looked better with the sign up top, too. I think we should change ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> That's another was, what, just out of curiosity, <laughs> was that ordinance based on square footage of frontage or just on two sides? You're, you're only allowed one sign per okay. side. Okay. You're right. I, I totally there. agree. <laughs> I totally agree. It's pretty cool up top. Okay, anything else? No? Okay, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Those opposed, motion carries. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay, you too. See you, Sean. Right, back up to number five. Uh, Mr. Gillen, this is how we do our meetings here. <laughs> <laughs> My head's still spent. Thank you. Like you gotta play those, num you gotta play those numbers in the daily lotto tonight. Yeah. Big believer in being a moving target. Believe yeah, well, you can, so. <laughs> right you can put your money on what the next agenda item will be. Right. Number five, request for assistance, the uh, Aurora Pink Out, and I'm going to ask uh, Director Yesbick to lead this. Okay. Um, we had a healthy discussion at the uh, committee level regarding this pink out event and really just for uh, as far as a little background we I don't know who initially came to us actually it might have even been the idea the concept for going turning Royal Oak pink in the month of October might have come from us initially I'm, uh, I'm not sure but um, so the idea of this pink out is to uh, for for um, breast cancer, obviously, and to create a a month long effort to to distinguish Royal Oak from other people that might be doing things to to um, support breast cancer for the month of October. That uh, some ideas, some great ideas were th thrown around um, conceptually. It, it sounds like a, a home run, um, but I think. And when we talked about it at the committee level, the committee's feeling was that there, there might not be enough time this year to really put together the type of program that's, that was going to impress people and really make Royal Oak stand out and really make people want to come to downtown Royal Oak to, to, um, to see everything that, that was going on with you know, pink lights, whatever, just something on, on the scale of what Rochester does, downtown Rochester does at Christmas, something to really, you know, uh, make people gravitate to downtown Royal Oak for the month of October. But the feeling was that the, they, they're still, um, the restaurant association was spearheading it, and there still was some desire to do something this month to uh, recognize October and, and uh, to put forth an effort to raise some money for breast cancer. So again, we had a healthy discussion. There was, I think, ultimately a request by the uh, Restaurant Association for some financial assistance to support their uh, pop-up dinner uh, that was going to be an event that kind of leading off the, the month of October and their fundraising efforts. Um, they have subsequently decided that there wasn't enough time to do that properly, and I think some of that was born out of, uh, out of the conversations that we had with them at the committee level. So um, they're streamlining it a, a little bit more, but my understanding of the event is that it's intended to bring people to the downtown. They have different activities that um, I received an email today from Carmen uh, inviting everybody, restaurants, retailers, everybody to participate in, in, uh, in various activities 
um, jars at the stores, th things like that. Um, some of it sounds nice. It's, it's not, I think, what you know, anywhere close to what it can be, sure. but, uh, but, but I think it's nice. And, and I think, and, and you know, maybe there's some additional discussion that we have to have, but I think what, what their effort is gonna be is to support the entire downtown or, or involve the entire downtown in, in this in month long um, effort to raise money for, for breast cancer. So there, there is not going to be a, uh, the pink out, which was the specific ask at the sub, uh, at the consumer marketing <clears throat> committee level, but they are doing some marketing. Uh, they still want to market the event. They have a you know website and graphic design and posters and cards they want to make. So they're still uh, suggesting or, or requesting that the DDA support uh, in some lesser amount, um, maybe the marketing uh, of of the month long um, month long pink out. Uh, for for the downtown, I think that's a, a fair description of of, of of where we're at right now, um, because I think and I and I'll you know candidly didn't it wasn't real comfortable with supporting like one particular event this pop up restaurant uh, or pop up dinner because it, it was it was limited in scope, but I think I think the um, marketing of the entire downtown for the entire month. And, and uh, inviting everybody to participate, not just restaurant association people, but, but, but retailers, people that aren't in the restaurant association. I, I think um, you know, this is intended to be a broad scope um, event. So uh, in, in, in my opinion, and, and you know, I'm sure there's other opinions, but I think it's, it's, it would be fair to, to give some support uh, for the marketing uh, of the entire month. Yeah, um, um, I, I agree with Director Yazbek, and 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 uh, and I, I agree actually with everything that you said. That, that yeah, it would be um, great to have more time and to and to really go at it. And that's it's really a neat idea. Um, proposing like like really lighten this thing up pink. I mean, I think that'd be really cool. But just because we don't have that, I don't think that puts the kibosh on this. In fact. I don't see anything wrong with, uh, with, with the powers that be and, and the people that are putting this on to dip, quote unquote, dip their toe into the water, and we do the same. In other words, we, you know, we're not gonna go with a, with a full-blown commitment, but I would say that you know, we keep something in the, in the four-figure range, mid to high four-figure range, and, um, and, and, and support it um, for a number of reasons. One, it's got the whole downtown involved. Um, um, it, you know, you've got retailers involved, you've got restaurants involved, and you, the, the way I understand it, since all the proceeds are going to cancer, which of course, there's not one of us sitting at the table or anyone anywhere hasn't been directly affected by cancer. Um, without our participation, all that, what seems to me, all it means is that, that, that it doesn't go as well and that cancer doesn't get as much money from it if, 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 if we don't do anything. And I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of other things that we do that we support that, uh, that don't have the end impact as a donation to fight cancer. Is there a reason why? Dr. Dillon, or I'm sorry. Through the chair, if I could ask Mr. Yazbek a question. So is it your understanding that there won't be any kind of a pop-up dinner at all? That's completely off the table? Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. So there wouldn't be any money that would be going to that kind of an event, per se? So. Correct. I was wondering why someone wasn't here from the Restaurant Association that asked for the money so we can ask questions. I can address that if you want me to. Um, they were, the, the ask was specifically as director, as Mr. Twing said, was for the pop-up dinner. That was the ask for the donation or for assistance just for that event. And that was what we were going to either vote for or vote against. So when the decision was made not to do the pop-up dinner, there was no need for them to, the request was essentially pulled off the table. However, I understand that there was other discussions that went on about possibly that they, the, this event, these eight other 
events that were going to transpire for the month of October were still going to go on regardless of the DDA's participation or support. Um, so I, I, I guess that's, you know, they're, they're, they're I, I would think at this point right now they're, they're, they're not knowing what to expect from the DDA. I mean, they, they attended the meeting and, and they heard the comments from the committee. Um, I think it's just a matter now of whether we want to be a participant or be a supporter of this cause and, and these eight events that are going to transpire over the October, uh, month of October. That's up to us. So, so who would the check be written to then? It would still go through the restaurant association because um, they're the ones that are putting it on. But the original, I, I can tell you this also, the original idea for this event, I agree with Director Yazbek, it did come from this table, and it was really picked up by one of the retailers in town who then advanced it through the Restaurant Association, and that's where, and that's where we got it from there. So right. I guess that answer, I hope that answers your question. So uh, Director Yazbek, in your conversation with Carmen, was there any kind of dollar amount discussed, or is there a recommendation? Or they have uh, in their spreadsheet uh, a figure of thirty-six hundred. Okay. That's that's for the promotion for marketing. And that, promotion. That's their marketing and promotion. Graphic design, social media, everything like that. And I and uh, I'll just I guess give again my opinion. This is not something I see as a one-time event. This is something sure. that we can grow. I, I want to make a, a suggestion that that we appoint a sub subcommittee, if you will, um, for next year that they can start planning and really, as as we conceptualized at the beginning, making this a, an incredible month for everybody downtown. If I could interrupt for just a second, yeah, um, we did pink out last year. Um, it was small, but 515 participated in Pink Out last year. Um, and the idea has been massaged and talked about through the stakeholders meeting. Um, we talked about it several meetings last January, February, and March. A lot of the ideas on this sheet I helped bring to life. Somewhere along the way, <clears throat> it got dropped and just brought back up again recently, um, which seems to be happening a lot. We we're getting a lot of events brought to us asking for a significant amount of money with very little time before the event to market those events properly. Here we are in the middle of August. October's only six weeks away. That's not enough time to market anything. Um, I, I, don't, I hate being the bad guy, but If we're going to give $3,600 to market something, it needs to go through the stakeholders meeting where everybody gets a piece of it, not the restaurant association managing the money. Um, that's where this idea came from. That's where it, it was born from. That's where I participated in many, many discussions about it. Um, the restaurant association does come to that, the stakeholders meeting as well as a lot of other people from across the community. That's where it belongs. I have a sour taste in my mouth because we just gave them twenty thousand dollars, and specifically we asked, "Are you going to market it?" And we know we never, they didn't market it. So their track, I mean, just last month. So their track record in marketing things last minute isn't very good in that scenario. Also, these events are very restaurant driven, so I have a problem with giving pr um, public money to a private association. I know they're not doing the dinner, but it's a beer stroll. It's um, what one other thing. So for, for a retailer, and it's a pink drink, the, for the retailer to participate, it's putting a penny jar in pink lights. That's hardly going to draw anyone to my store. Not, it's not a participation. It's just a 1950s kind of idea, which is successful, a penny jar, but it's not, a, it's not an event, a car wash. Uh, and I, I just want to piggyback on what I said. I, I'm not saying that this is a bad idea, and I'm not saying that we shouldn't move forward with it this year. I'm doing the car wash. 515 is sponsoring the car wash portion of it. However, I really feel we need to start working on next year and really making this pink out Royal Oak, where we're going to turn the buildings pink, and all the trees are going to have pink lights in it, and we're going to give people a reason to come here um, 
and, and spend some significant money on it. Um, we started it small last year. It's grown a little bit bigger this year. Um, but if it's truly going to be a community-wide event, it needs to be, we need to involve everyone and continue to grow it. Um, I, I, I think you're exactly right. I think, you know, that's, uh, that is exactly our message to the restaurant association or the folks that were, you know, presenting this at the committee. That's the message we gave them is that we have to do something. If we're going to spend money, we want to do something that's really going to promote the downtown. So you're exactly right. And, and uh, I think you're exactly right, too. Um, this should be bigger and better and, and more inclusive um, for everybody. But I think, you know, regardless of whether we gave it to the chamber, the retailers association, all there isn't anymore, restaurant, it doesn't matter what, what I believe we should do at this point this year and, and, you know, make it a whole different ball game next year is just to give them some support so they can market that Royal Oak is, and this money should be used for marketing, not for the beer stroll, not for the restaurant but week. It should be used for marketing. And, and just market that downtown Ray Loc is supporting um, breast cancer for the month of October. This is how we're doing it. Let them get their, their activities out, whatever it is. And, and that's what the money would, would be going for, specifically those things, not restaurant-type things. And I want, I think, um, a subcommittee, Gary, Robin, we can appoint, you can, we can appoint it at the, at the Consumer Marketing Committee level and start talking about next year right away because this is a, a wonderful concept to and a wonderful opportunity to promote downtown Royal Oak in support of you know an excellent cause. Agreed. Uh, um, my yeah. question is and I look at the budgets here and there's um, there's website creations, there's all of these Facebook page creations. Who's gonna manage that? The did he, the down, Royal Oak already has a website. We we already have Facebook pages. We don't need to create new ones. You advertise what you're doing on the pages that already exist. So I'm not, I just feel like there's too many fuzzy edges on this to just cut a check to somebody for $3,600. I'm sorry. Oh, go well, ahead. You're fine. Okay. You're, 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 are you done? I, I, I made my point. Okay. Director Rao. Uh, one, as, as far as that goes, I think, I think we've all been in, in agreement that we, we as the DDA don't want to tell other people how to run their events per se. I mean, we can make suggestions here and there, but if it's a DDA event, then, then we'll do that. Number two, um, I do agree vegans and vodka from, from our standpoint was a, was a disaster. Um, I don't know whether that whole thing just whole seemed weird to me how it came about, um, the, 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 from the burgeoning of it, but the idea, how it got there, um, who was in charge of it? I don't. I don't even understand what when it became a restaurant association thing or whatever. That being said, um, a lot of times at this table, um, it seems like when the restaurant association comes before it, particularly when there's certain people involved in it from a promotions and a standpoint, there is immediate disagreement with certain things because it's always the restaurant association, it's always the restaurant association, it's always the restaurant association. Um, and my feeling is we can't punish the restaurant association for keeping on having events, for continuing to have events. Um, if other associations, whether it's the retailers associations, the realtor associations, I don't care who it is, if they wanted to have events to bring people into downtown Royal Oak, I'd vehemently be for them all day long. And because they're the ones who keep on, who continue to have events, they continue to bring people to this town, I don't understand why we want to punish them for that. Well, let, me, let me finish, let me finish. Um, this event in particular, um, while I agree 100% with everything that everybody's saying, that, that, that it would be so cool if we had a year to, to get this together and, and do it right, and this, that, and the other, and that, that I understand. But we're not, we're not talking about giving them you know, $30,000 for the event. We're talking about giving them maybe, four, the way I look at it, maybe $4,000, because they got some printing for the pink passes and the pink drinks. And, and if the, Jar thing is fifties. I mean, I, I then 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 maybe the retailers who were involved in this because I do know that I believe that there are some who are directly involved in it. Somebody should say to them, "Here's what we could do," or come up with some ideas, or you do it once and find out what you can do better next year. But to dip our toe in the water for four thousand dollars and to turn it down because you know 
it, it's a restaurant association event. Uh, I, I don't think it's fair to punish them because they continue to, to, to promote the downtown area and bring people to downtown, particularly in October where anybody, you know, I've, I've lived on Main Street for 15 years now, and after Arts, Beats, and Eats, there's a dramatic drop in people that come into the downtown area. I'm very uncomfortable just hashing this out uh, from the day. I, I really feel like this should be talked about in, in committee level. Um, in, in, it was at the committee level. They, no, they, this, they not, changed not, it. this is completely different than what we talked about at the committee level. They changed We're the asking ads. for. Yeah, yeah. Can I jump in two seconds? It, it, all, the request that's in front of you is all that, that the committee saw with the pink out uh, and the request for the, the pop-up dinner. If if the restaurant association has said they're not going to do the and they don't need this request anymore, um, you can either move on from it, take no action, or you can clear the decks and say that you're not going to make a motion to not provide any funding based on the indication that they're not requesting it anymore, however you clear the deck. If you want to do marketing and things as part of the Pink Elk Month, I don't know that you need to give any more money. You can use your already funded advertising and marketing program uh, to spearhead it and do it on your own. You don't need to give anyone any money. You just need the details from them as to how you want to undercur that. And, and the third point on that regard is you don't have anything written in front of you, so I don't know what that means. And I would agree with Gary that I don't know how you can act on anything that you don't have in front of you to act on. So, so, so what, to Tim, what you're saying is to use our... <clears throat> Budgeted marketing funds, or let them use We've them. We've got one hundred and eighty thousand dollars in marketing, PR, and yeah, social it, media, and 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 it, there's no specific message there. It's a message about downtown and what's going on downtown, and there's no reason why you can't use a portion of that to say, pink out's occurring in October, and here's what's occurring, and and you don't have to give any of that money to anyone. You just yourself. Sean gets the message and we <clears throat> pass it on to the advertisers and you go forward as far as this year. As far as next year, yeah. if you want to make it a bigger deal. My only point is I, you don't have anything in writing in front of you. So from an administrative standpoint, I'd rather, I, I don't see how you get this flushed out in time to understand what you're giving the Restaurant Association for. Secondly, I don't have a request from them that's in writing that says what they want it, what they want it for. So, um, so I would, I would, I would suggest that that you know, I could either because the only request in front of you is for the pink out and the dinner, and that's the only thing that's been vented through your committee, is that you deal with that, and if it's been withdrawn, I guess there's there's no requirement for an action on it because you won't be authorizing any money. I would just suggest that maybe you put on the record that you're not providing money because it's your understanding it's been withdrawn. Um, and, and then there's another mechanism to, to go forward with advertising their event. But, but is, are, so are you, are you saying that if we, if we <clears throat> really don't have, if we don't do anything, but if we just say um, what's your mark Four thousand dollars, let's say, of our advertising budget for pink out. I don't even I think guess. you need to do that. No, so, it, it, it would just be I, part of I might be able to market. explain it a little bit. But, 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 but I, I guess my, my, my question, Tim, is are you saying we can't do anything now and that it's got to go back to committee and come back to us in September? Because at that my point, at that yes. point, question is you don't do anything as far as requests from the but restaurant Matt, association because I, I, I don't know what that is. The marketing, um, <laughs> I have no idea. The marketing what that mechanism is. for Royal Oak events is already in place. Right. We we already have the websites. We already have the Facebook pages. We already have the social media. We have all that stuff. All they need to do is get the information to the proper people, and it gets out. Um, we, we we've created a, a, a great marketing um, tool in, in in downtown. We spent a lot of money last year. So to have to create more just doesn't make you, sense. You've, you've got you've got the hundred and eighty thousand roughly in pure marketing of the downtown. You've got another PR firm on board to do PR on form. So I think you can use those two venues to get out whatever message the restaurant association wants to send to you. And and what we're avoiding there is having having to have any information today from the restaurant association 
or understanding what writing a check to them. They don't need to write a check for them. It's, you're already paying those other companies to do what you told them to do. <coughs> That's my only suggestion. Director Spire. I'm going to make a motion to um, take no action on the specific matter that's before us today in the memo. I second it. We got a motion by Director Savaya, second by Director London. Do we need to even do that? No. Well, it's been done. I so. thought that is what you wanted. It can be done, but again, I think no action is no action. So. Okay, and then I'll withdraw my motion. If, if anything, I think the motion, if there was going to be a motion. I thought Tim said he wanted it indicated. That's well, why I. The motion I suggested was to reject motion it. Motion to deny. That would. That, if, you, if you're going to do no action, you'll so need it. So okay. right well, Do you want to rescind the motion you made? I'll, I'll rescind the motion that I made. Do you want to rescind your I'll second? I'll rescind my second. Do you want to remake a motion? Um, and just move on, too. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll stand pat here. Okay. So, so who, who uh, how do we direct Sean to direct Mark Slane or whatever? Director Gill. Let me take a shot at it. So I'm, I'm not used to making motions. This is all new to me. So, but um, I guess it'll be, it'll be a two-part motion. If we have to, we could treat it as separate motions. My first, I would move to uh, deny the respectfully to deny the request from the Restaurant Association for money to support the pop out dinner. That's the issue that's on the agenda. And then okay. second would be um, a mo to move to direct um, Mr. Kammer, the staff, our public relations consultant, um, using existing budgeted funds to promote the Pink Out event along with all the other downtown authority events yeah, a, in this month. It's a double motion. I love it. Director London, you want to make a double second? Well, do I want to second that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I second that. Seconding what? I second that one. You're second the first? You're second the second? Yeah. You're the second second? <laughs> okay. That's a first. In all my years. Two separate motions? They've done it once. I love it. Okay. Going away, bro. So. All right. So let's, let's look at this now. So we got two motions on the table, but I think we're going to vote on one at a time. So the first motion, which is to respectfully deny the request. Uh, any discussion? Specifically to the pop-up dinner, is that yeah, that was correct. that was part of your motion? To whatever, to going. whatever this, to, okay. yeah, to this, to the motion put to the okay. request put in front of us. The request in front of us. Okay. okay. And again, so. it's not any reflection on the restaurant association or the underlying cause itself. I don't think anybody at the table has any issues with either of those things. Okay. But in terms of this request, in my opinion, I think it should be denied. Okay. Any further discussion on the first Yeah, motion? I think the restaurant association is going to be elated because now we're spending $180,000 on their pink out event. <laughs> it's going to be great. It's going to be here from the other attorney at the table. Okay, there we go. Uh, any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Uh, okay, the second motion, which is to direct the staff and to use our resources to help promote staff in our in our in our, in our, our public in our, relations consultants. Relations. Yeah. Is there any discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Right. Do we uh, do we need any permission to appoint uh, uh, the, for this consumer marketing committee to appoint a committee no. to? You, you can go ahead. Your chair. Okay. You can go ahead and do whatever you want. Thank you. So that would have been a triple motion. All right, we're going to go in order now. Uh, number six, recommendation on monthly permits and lot P9. Mr. Twain. Uh, the infrastructure committee um, had an issue referred to it uh, based on some complaints uh, regarding the use of lot P9, which is the Sherman Drive lot, the long, narrow one. There is a copy of an aerial photo highlighting which one it is in your packet. Uh, it's right across from the... Uh, bus transit station. Um, regarding the inability to uh, have some spaces that are convenient at the south end of that lot because the city sells uh, monthly passes in, in that lot. Uh, the information that was provided to the infrastructure committee uh, was provided by uh, Parkright. 
uh, in terms of there's a spreadsheet there that based on the dollars generated on a, a, a pass amount, there's roughly 35 monthly passes sold for that lot uh, per month since January to June. Um, the committee discussed the configuration of the lot, the fact that there were 25 12-hour meters uh, towards the north end of the lot. There are 93-hour meters in it. It is also used for uh, Amtrak passengers, which can buy uh, passes separate from that for their use during their <coughs> ride on this day. But at the end of it, the uh, committee uh, discussed the fact that it was so close to the uh, new Center Street parking deck that uh, they are recommending that the DDA adopt a resolution recommending to the City Commission that uh, staff in the city would stop selling monthly passes in uh, lot P9 uh, and that those lot uh, or that they be restricted to the 12 hour meters or that uh, towards the north end um, and again uh, others could be potentially used in the uh, new Center Street deck or the Center Street Jack in general um, so there's just those basic two options I think that are coming from the committee stop selling passes in its totality or restrict their use to the uh, 12 hour meters at the north end I don't know if the committee wants to add anything to that but just briefly um, I, I think either option will will <coughs> solve the problem the re all the retail from this lot is at the south the south end of the lot so we wanted to make sure that we kept those meters available for a three-hour maximum and any of the long term can either go to the north end or if we're going to sell passes then we always have we have the center street structure available also so that's our recommendation to the city commission and 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 in reading this correct there's a there's like 35 monthly permits per month basically yeah so so if you if you went with the 9025 I mean basically I mean, on an average day, if there's 35 monthly permits, I don't think all 35 show up, so you're only only a handful are moving. It's just a matter of moving them to the north end of the lot. Right. Correct. It's just a matter. That, and we can... Does does the committee have a, a, a favorite out of these two? Moving out of the garage. <laughs> I mean, all that would be our favorite. That would be my idea, yeah. So, yeah. so feed up for the retailers. So, yeah, so absolutely. all of them. Yeah. Okay. Well, and yeah. the hair salons. There's hair salons there, right. too. Right. With you. Then, I, then I move that we support um, <coughs> no permits in the lot. Second. Got a motion by Director Riley. Got a second by Director Bagley. Any discussion? I mean, that's right. Heard mine. That's, that's why we, <laughs> that's that's why we, that's why we built the garages. Yeah. yeah. That's why yeah, we built the garages. Put them in there. That's exactly why we built the garages. I mean, <laughs> I would just guess from an enforcement standpoint, if we try to split the lot where you can park and yep. where you can't, I think that's just going to cause confusion. Yep. So I think we're better off yep. to say, yeah. get them in the deck. Absolutely. Black and white. Absolutely. Okay, so today is, uh, what, August 21st. Is there a way that we can uh, somehow post notice for those people, or how is that going to work? Or will they just well, still got to go to the commission for their okay. blessing. But, I mean, when they do? When, they, when it does happen, they'll give some notice okay. to the permit holders that they're not going to sell them anymore. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Anything else? That I'll was call. easy. I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Can I ask a real quick question while we're on parking? And, and um, this, is, this is outside of this subject. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, I saw that the, um, um, the recommendation that we made to the city commission on the handicapped parking, what they decided was to go with um, a six-month trial um, with those spots on free parking, um, which, 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 is, which is fine. I know there wasn't unanimous support on that. Um, my question is, um, and, and in everything I read, it's going to be a monitored situation. Um, I guess my question is how and who in terms of the monitoring. I mean, I just, it's kind of like being, um, I hate to use the term, but, but half pregnant, you know, I mean, it's like once you got that out there. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know if anybody can answer that or not, or if that was discussed. But, well, not, not specifically. I mean, on the staff level, we've had some discussion about that. I think it's a legitimate question because, 
it's not like you can measure the difference in parking revenue. Well, yeah, exactly. Um, it, it, and, and the difference could be attributed to any number of different things. And I don't, so, think, I don't think anybody's chalking tires or what you can't do anymore, and you're not going around. So, so I, th I think, to be honest, I think a lot of it's probably going to be anecdotal through okay. the police department and through people that are using and, the And the retailers around there who are getting their suit, <laughs> yeah, who can watch the spots and see. The discussion that we're having at this point in time is um, whether or not we want to somehow um, have specific new bags created and then just bag the meter heads, indicating that it's free for handicapped parking, or if we want to do some kind of signage like the 30-minute the parking. Mm -hmm. So Judy Davids and I were talking about that today. So she's in the process of getting some prices, and I think probably what we'll do is we'll take those options to the commission and see if the commission has a feeling one way or the other. And is there a... Um, e e uh, 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 it, it, albeit that, that it's free, is there a max time, or is there no restraints? Well, it's still two hours, isn't it? Well, if if the meters are still in it, the meters are limited to the time period, which would be two hours. But 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 it, but the handicap spots. If, if it's free, free, there is no limitation. Well, that but, was, but that but, was part of the problem. Well. Well, I guess what, what 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 was the commission's intention? Because you could very easily put up a sign like the thirty minute parking, which, by the way, the meters take more than thirty minutes. If, if I mean, if anybody's ever noticed that, it's just you're kind of on your own for that. So I guess my question would be, if it's, I, I mean, to me, the happy medium would be it's a two hour max free. So the sign should say handicap parking free two hour maximum. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, I don't remember that there was any specific discussion at the commission table about that. Okay. I am aware that there are some other communities in other states that are providing free parking for people who are disabled and they've they've tacked on a little bit of extra time so as where normally it might be a 30 minute parking place but they maybe they allow two hours or something like that figuring that if it's, if it's someone that it is disabled it's going to take them longer to get, potentially to get it in and out of their car and to get in and out of to the store or the restaurant wherever it is they're going so but, you know, I, I think that's a very good question. I think it's probably something we'll have to follow up with the commission on. I mean, if, 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 if you just, you know, if, if, and, and just the, 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 the elephant in the room is the abuse, is, is the abuse that goes on. And, and if, 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 if we really want to limit the abuse and want it to be used for what it's used for, then I think basically what you would say is free parking to our maximum. Or what, what somebody could have done is at least made it like a, you know, a lower rate or something like that, a simple lower rate, so that the meter actually does work and that there's more responsibility and accountability. <coughs> but it is what it is. All right, just want to know. All right, and on to number eight, the facade grant application. No, I'm sorry. On to number seven. <laughs> Even I'm confused. The commercial space. Uh, Tim, um, you did get a. a communication out from the committee um, where I tried to summarize the uh, committee's recommendation on the preliminary floor plan uh, for the commercial space in the Center Street deck. Uh, primarily the committee, if you looked at the floor plan that was in your packet, wanted the uh, restroom area, the mechanical <coughs> room area more squared off or rectangular. Um, they thought the closet uh, shouldn't open into one of the restrooms, but either into the janitorial closet or into the hallway. And some reconfiguration of uh, one of the uh, uh, changing table designs to help that uh, that happen. What I passed out today, um, the architect that's uh, uh, preparing the drawings for the DDA actually came back with four options, um, various configurations of of those layouts. Um, uh, I wasn't expecting to get four. Uh, uh, but I did try to send that out to the committee members ahead of the meeting to see if they had any uh, input on it. Uh, I've only heard from one that said they preferred option A. Um, procedurally, I would like the uh, DDA to move forward with this as soon as possible. And if that means today, that would be great. Um, this does need to go from the DDA to the City Commission because the City Commission owns the building, uh, the parking deck. Uh, so I want to make sure they're on board with whatever floor plan 
uh, that DDA is uh, recommending. Um, once the commission is also on board, uh, the architect will be released to prepare construction documents. Once those are done, it'll go out for bid, and we'll get bids back on to actually do the construction. And then the DDA will either decide whether to fund it, assist in funding, and the commission will vote to also award the contract to do the work. So procedurally, those are all the steps that still have to occur. Um, this has kind of been inching along, uh, as, as the committee knows. Uh, so I, before I move forward, I hope we can get some sort of uh, uh, conceptual floor plan laid out. That doesn't mean that there can't be minor adjustments uh, uh, during the construction document phase. Uh, on some items because they may run into some things. Uh, so that's procedurally what we're looking at. Basically, the concept simply indicates there is ample area for a future warming kitchen up in the uh, northwest corner of the space. It's just kind of shaded. Uh, there's not The committee's not intended to put that in or design it. They just wanted to make sure that it could be done based on mechanical and access points and other things. And that was the area that the architect indicated it could occur. Uh, the restrooms, mechanical rooms, electrical rooms are in yeah. the south uh, west corner of the space. Uh, the only other revision or modification to that floor plan, I believe, is the double door access out to uh, uh, Center Street on the uh, east elevation of the building. So I don't know if there's questions, a preferred option. I don't, I mean, committee members may want to weigh in. Can you tell, who was the picky committee member that didn't like the bathroom? Shirley. Yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. All right. I'll just, you know, so right now, I mean, I'll make a motion to approve, I'll start with that, make a motion to approve option A in the packet that we a have here. A-101A. Yep. Okay. And I'll second that motion. Where it came from it. was you know, we, we did look at some options before, and we had the architects tighten up the bathroom so we got more leasable area. I think you can see that. And we uh, also proposed at some point uh, earlier on the double doors, which we're proposing along Center Street. So I think we got that added in. And uh, as Tim mentioned, I mean, the warming kitchens is something for the future, which we might want to, like, leave the slab out. But we'll also know so we can deal with, you know, down the road on that. Um, you know, we wanted to create a more efficient layout for the bathrooms. I think that they achieved that, where they have less doors, and there's one hallway where you can then go into the men's and women's, whereas before there were doors coming in from either side. So I think they, I think they got there. I think this is a good, good option. And it looks better than the other ones that we see here, where they have closets off the hallway. You just have more opportunities for people to, you know, just more doors. So right, we're limiting doors. We're, we're keeping the access into the janitor's closet and that area more secure, in my opinion. The only thing I'd bring up, though, Tim, which you might want to mention to them, I don't know where the property line sits along Center Street, but the doors can't swing over the property line. So I don't know if you saw that. Not. So we'll have to, <clears throat> I don't know if we want to um, plan on a vestibule now or not, but we're going to need that because you can't swing the doors out over the sidewalk. So we'll have to plan for that now somehow. But that's. I didn't know that. So I do have a motion by Director Krieger and a second by Director Safari. Yeah, right, or the sliders. We I can do that. Because you could do that, you're joined. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> We got a motion. Does anybody have any questions or? I just I don't know if you can answer this question. You're the architect, but approximately how much usable square footage does this leave? I don't know. Okay. I, uh, I'm an architect, but not the architect. <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember the square footage. Well, if the there's 5,700 square feet total, uh, and probably. the only the only portion that's being taken out. Technically, with this plan, would be the area that's the restroom, mechanical, um, that corner. And I don't see a total dimension on there, but it's. This is 12. It's still 30, 30, 30, 40, like 4,000 square feet. 40, about, se about 740 square feet is, yeah. what, they're, is what they're taking. Something like that. Yep. There's still about 5,000 square feet of usable yeah. space. Yeah, that's actually a good number. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good number. Any other questions, comments? I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed, motion carried. That brings us to our last item, which is uh,
committee updates. I know we kind of covered a lot. Uh, Director Yesbeck, is there anything that we didn't talk about today that might be falling under your committee? No, I think we covered the topic that we spent our time on this month. Director Safaya. Um, our last meeting consisted of items 6, 7, and 8, and what uh, uh, Sean talked about in terms of we did do a walking tour of the downtown and singled out uh, sidewalk improvements that needed to be done and kind of prioritized them. So uh, we did work on that also. You didn't have a business marketing committee meeting. Yep, uh, a couple things. Um, the main thing was uh, the marijuana um, and the, 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 the web that that is. Um, basically, what we decided as we went through, there's basically six different operations that can come in here, and um, we decided that, that uh, there's so much out there and there's so much that seems to be um, either unsure or still in the process of, of coming into, into play that the city, the commission, the planning commission, the city attorney, zoning, um, the zoning are all doing a great job of not only due diligence, but getting input from the citizens. So basically what we did is just said uh, more or less that we support what they're doing and that we'd like to be kind of kept in the loop along the way. And then when it gets down to a further point, you know, maybe then we can see what it looks like with regard to, to downtown. And, and what would be desirable or undesirable, et cetera. So that was the, our stance on the on marijuana. And then um, the other thing was, um, I think the only thing was with, with regard to Trailhead, where the um, uh, hotel is and the apartments are coming in, uh, we, have, we have a TIF reimbursement plan with them, and the, the uh, tax assessment has been set, and um, they'll pay their taxes and we'll have the, the reimbursement. And we okayed them with using uh, waivers of liens as proof of the um, um, site upgrades, which, I mean, basically what we asked them to do, the parking structure alone covered that. But So that's just instead of invoices, right. you said waivers of liens would be fine. Yeah. yeah, just to add to that, they, they have to finish all of their site work, their landscaping, all of the public improvement portion. Once they've finished all of that um, they have to submit an affidavit of the cost for each one of those public component parts as well as a waiver to show that they've paid the contractors under that now they don't have to finish the interior of the apartment building right so that can continue to right. go on but just the they're not they're not eligible <coughs> for reimbursement until they've finished all of the okay. public public improvement portion and submitted those things once they've done that, the committee will review it. Uh, I want to, they've had a little taste of what they're going to see at the last meeting. And then it'll come to this body to actually take action on that they've met that criteria. Sure. You'll have a resolution to pass yeah. here. In, in, in other words, the, 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 the reimbursement is already set. It's just a matter of them, a one-time approval that they've met what we asked them to do to, to start the reimbursements. Anybody uh, got any questions about that? So that's what we've uh, we finally come full loop on the hotel. This kind of means it's done in a way. So that's a good news. And the apartments are getting close too. Yes, apartments are getting close. Uh, one more thing. Um, I've, I've been doing this for nine years now almost. And uh, those of you who know me for a long time know that I've been, uh, I came, I, Worked on charities and worked uh, a lot of the Boys and Girls Club, local charities, Optimist Club, all kinds of clubs. And I was asked three times to sit up here on this committee, and twice I said no, and the third time I said yes. And it's been a lot of fun, but I think uh, come October, I'm going to step down after the October meeting and get back to where I used to be. I'm going to be working with the Methodist Church. Uh, there's, they're celebrating their 182nd year, and I'm going to name to the trustees of the church, and I'm going to work closely with them. I'm going to get back working with Brett at the what's now the Metro Detroit Youth Clubs. It's where I'm uh, most comfortable and most effective. So uh, at the end of the October 16th meeting, I'm going to step down, and, and you guys can find some somebody younger to take my spot, hopefully. Shouldn't be, that shouldn't be too hard. 
So, but uh, I've enjoyed it. I won't be here next month. I'll be out of town, but I will be here for the October meeting, and uh, after that, we'll turn it over to Director Safai, I believe. So, so anyhow, just one quick announcement. Object? I'm sure you can. <laughs> <laughs> sure you can. So I suggest, uh, if we can, we, uh, everybody can leave some time open after the meeting, the October meeting. Um, Jay said he would buy all of us a few drinks. <laughs> he would pick up the tab. This is his last act. Now, Director Gilman, I don't know if it's necessary, but I know the history in the city and the recent history with Oakland County. Is it, is, should the board take any action here to approve, uh, to accept this? I don't think the board should, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's it, after I think you formally submitted a letter of resignation, which I haven't done yet, but be appropriate you'll be getting for, that shortly. Yeah. But, so, I was just going to ask if you might, uh, between now and October, maybe he'll decide to rescind. <laughs> I don't think so. I've been doing this on a city committee of one sort or the other for 17 years, over 17 years now. The most exciting of which was the Charter Review Committee, which could easily be renamed the Watching Side Group Committee. So, uh, but I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. So, uh, we'll we'll miss you next month, but we'll catch you in October. All right. Okay. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. <coughs> motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn yes. by Director Krieger. Yeah. Second. Second by a couple people. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Good night.